Ninth best performer year to date is SVB Financial. This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been stakely concerned about. SVB is the old Silicon Valley Bank. The stock was the fourth worst performer in 2022. I think the fears were not justified, and it's a very compelling situation. Hey, by the way, long term private equity and venture capital, they're not going away. The stock's still cheap. I guess the big news, I mean, I had some other topics prepared this week, Cy, but I think the big piece of news is SVB's collapse. And it basically was a bank that collapsed in two days. This is like a huge piece of news. It kind of reminds me of the whole 2008 scenario with just, uh, you know, Bear Stearns goes down and then all of a sudden there's this like contagion effect, right, with Lehman and all these other banks the whole bailout situation and all that jazz took place. Um, and there's some fear right now that that could be the, the scenario this time around with a, a, a potential collapse in the financial system. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I actually didn't know what I agreed to talk about on this YouTube channel, but I guess we're going to talk about this bank. I don't think it's going to trigger a cascading effect of bank failures but i think other banks are going to take notice and probably start putting more cash into reserves which means they'll stop making loans and things like that that maybe they had already with the high interest rates i'm sure that was coming slowing down anyway but they're probably going to be starting to put more money in reserves and lending a little bit less which might have an impact on the economy uh overall i think this will come out okay. Um, I, I I have a feeling the actual losses that this bank. So, uh, just to just to cover the details of SVB, SVB actually grew from sixty billion in deposits to around two hundred billion in deposit just over COVID in the last three years. So, that's that's an interesting situation in itself, but. It looks like they've only lost a few billion dollars. So the actual hit across all those accounts is going to be probably pennies on the dollar. Like people will come out with 90, 90 to oh, probably even 100% of their money without a bailout. I, I do not believe a bailout will happen. The, there is not enough political capital to bail out a bank, especially a bank that people are going to associate with very wealthy tech companies. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree with you there um, in, in regards to the bailout, as well as its its deposits versus its liabilities, et cetera. The bank, you know, from, from the intel I gathered and the research I was doing on, on the bank, 77% of its money was invested in treasuries. Um, and the government's always going to make hole on the treasuries. Um, they ran into issues with the Treasury, which was probably the reason for their collapse. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But they also have another $70 billion in loans that they have out um, that it's really difficult for them to make, uh, you know, to recall those loans or figure out a way to, you know, make depositors whole on those loans. But as long as the loans were written in, you know, high quality loans to good, responsible borrowers, uh, that $70 billion should also be very viable uh, for them to get back. So uh, the main reason for their undoing was essentially uh, they basically there was a run on the bank. Um, basically, fear got out about uh, SVB Financial uh, because they wanted to essentially sell shares about $2.2 billion in shares. Uh, to uh, to help um, you know mitigate some of the the withdrawals uh, that they were facing as a bank, and but between that and what happened with Silvergate Bank, um, so th there was another bank failure, bas basically a bank failure, Silvergate Bank, um, where the stock price basically collapsed and there was a run on on Silvergate um, that SVB could basically be in the same situation, you know, so. Um, a small run on, um, you know, this financial institution, they, if, you know, if they can't come up with the capital, they have to figure out a way to raise the capital. And in their case, with it, with the Federal Reserve's interest rates going higher and higher, um, rather than waiting for the Treasury bills to mature at face value, which they wouldn't have experienced really that big of a loss if they waited for the Treasury bills to mature, 
They have to sell bills that are now worth a lot less because interest rates are, are higher now. Um, and, you know, bond prices and um, bond prices as well as interest rates, these are inversely correlated, um, you know, uh, uh, they have an inverse uh, correlation. So interest rates rise, bond prices go down. So, um, and, and vice versa, interest rates go down, bond prices go up. But in, in SVB's case, they're now having to sell these bonds on the market with the interest rates being much higher. So they're fe fetching a much lower price, which is resulting in their, in their short-term um, capital issues. Um, but yeah, they're, they're basically couldn't come up with, uh, with enough capital to make depositors whole in its present situation. And for that reason, banks shut down and FDIC is taking over. So, um, you know, my, my personal opinion on the matter is there, this is probably not systematic. SVB was, uh, lending to a lot of venture cap, uh, companies and bankers to the, those types of firms. So, um, you know, I, I, I would hope that their exposure is limited to just that, but we just don't know the, the ramifications yet. Um, and I guess we'll see how all this plays out next week. I, I actually don't think there's going to be major ramifications. I think there will be short term, um, short term ramifications, of course. Like I saw an article, Roku has like uh, half a billion dollars stuck in there. Yeah, but I, I read um, that. Yeah, <laughs> but by Monday, I think the uh, government will announce their plan. They're probably going to sell off the loans to another bank. And they're going to just sell the assets and recover, I, I'm going to guess, most of the money, if not like a small haircut to some of the depositors. Um, now, I don't know how fast this stuff is recovered. Like, will these companies, these companies will get most of their money back? Will they get it by next Tuesday? Probably not. I don't know. It might take weeks or months as the government... Um, but I don't think there's long-term ramifications, which actually um, I want to ask you something. This is going to have short-term ramifications in that the entire financial sector is going to tank and the tech companies that may have accounts or are perceived to have accounts are going to tank. So there's probably good opportunities to pick up some names that are just going to bounce back when this blows over. Um, of course, the flip side is, will this start an overall, is this the catalyst the market needed to finally just be like, okay, it's time for the cyclical recession? Yeah, it, it, it's funny you say that because over the last last week, banks like JP Morgan had quite a bit of a, you know, sell-off, um, you know, o over the course of five days. I mean... Not not by that much. Even Bank of America fell a lot, but banks like um, I mean, you can pull up a chart of FRC, and it had some of the most sick price action I've ever seen on on Friday. I, I took a I took a trade on FRC, but without even going into the trade, FRC just dropped like a rock on Friday. At one point, it traded as low as forty dollars before bouncing back. And then you also have like a, a stock like WAL. Um, WAL is another bank that has actually went down a lot. Um, and yeah, if the thing blows over, some of these might. You know, I I'm not gonna tell people how to trade here. I don't know if I'm gonna even pick these up right away. I I, I don't know what's happening right this second. But WAL dropped from like seventy bucks to like. 50 bucks really quickly, <laughs> you know? So, um, a, a lot of stocks are affected. And then there, there, there was one other one, SBNY. That was another ticker that I was actually watching on Friday for a trade. Um, but the price action was like nonsensical, um, for, for some time, uh, you know, obviously due to extreme volatility, but SBNY was another one where it like dropped from like 91 or something on Thursday's close down to like at one point, 70 or 68 dollars signature bank this wasn't known to the general public until i think thursday uh i think thursday and then friday it blew up it's all over the news that's because the government came in and took over the bank 
But um, I did see something interesting that the CEO and CFO of Silicon Valley Bank about two weeks ago sold about $4 million worth yeah. of insider trading. Yeah, I, I read that same article. I was about to bring that up as well. It's like, did he know something was happening? Like, well, of course he knew something was happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course he knew. And then I'm wondering how many other people knew that these bank stocks may have been tanking in advance. So. That's that, that's so true. Because over a five-day period, a lot of these banks were dropping even before the news was actually announced. You know, uh, although stocks were dropping uh, up until Friday, um, it was a controlled drop. Uh, like, it was clear there was some selling going on, some serious selling, but uh, there were also buyers coming in. Uh, but... When the news was finally finally announced, it was it wasn't like that. It was just a massive steep drop. So I I totally get what you're saying, Sai. It's possible news got out ahead of time, and for that reason, you know these stocks were selling off all week. I wonder what the SEC will do, or I mean, they'll probably do nothing. Of course. But, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's. I just found it interesting. It's like, okay, this is an odd time to sell uh, substant. Like, if you look at the insider trading, they have never ever sold that much stock um, before. It's always about a quarter million dollars or so. But boom, two weeks before, four million dollars. He he wanted out, you know. And then uh, there was some. There was some like. Uh... I forget whether it was it a Twitter feed or he got on some like news um, newspaper like uh, but but he says everyone just needs to calm down. We've never let anyone down. I, I forget what he what exactly he said, but everyone needs to uh, let us do our job and not panic and things will be fine. But he, there he is on the other side, just selling <laughs> selling company stock. Um, hopefully we can we can find that um, that news. What's interesting is I, I actually saw articles that almost portrayed the bank sympathetically and they tried to blame the VCs and Peter Thiel specifically. Peter <laughs> Thiel? Yeah. What is his name? Thiel. Peter Thiel. Um, saying Peter Thiel pulled all this money. Not only did he pull... pull not only did Peter Thiel pull all his money, he got all his uh, venture cap companies to pull their money. Um, so they're out clean before the bank <laughs> was taken over. Um, and a lot of people started blaming him for the run on the bank, but it it doesn't make sense to me. It's the bank's job to have that money there. Like, uh, yeah. the, the it's an interesting scenario. If everybody kept their money there, if everybody left their money and didn't touch it, would this bank have made it? Yes. But it's on that bank, too, to have that money when requested. It's not It's not Peter Thiel's job to be like, okay, let me, uh, let me take a chance here. Uh, the game theory of this situation is very simple. Uh, you should pull your money. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and honestly, those are things people only know after the fact. I think after the FDIC and... and you know, regulators got involved. Do people know the financials the way they are that? Yeah, they, they probably could have handled. I mean, they had enough assets to handle their liabilities. But at, at, the, at the end of the day, they, they couldn't meet the current demand of liquidations. You know what I mean? I, I think I think what actually did them in is announcing the stock issuance. They're issuing shares to shore up liquidity. That is not something people want to hear about their bank. It, uh, ex exactly. And, and, and anybody, anybody that says Peter Thiel should have left his money in there, uh, I, I would ask them, are you, are you ready to buy SVB shares as they issue new shares to shore up liquidity as right. the stock tanks like a rock? I don't think so. I don't think anybody's ready to buy those shares because you don't actually know the true significance of what's going on there yeah until the fdic came in and took it over it, 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 i wouldn't exactly. have, i wouldn't have bought that stock no it, exactly and for all you know they could have put all their money into sam bakeman freed and alameda research and alameda research could have lost it all because they were the worst traders in the history of trading 
uh, trading crypto and SVB, um, you know, this this bank just doesn't have the capital anymore because they lent it to all, a bunch of exchanges. And by the way, uh, SVB, I believe, and Silvergate both had a lot of loans out to crypto exchanges and things like that. So, you know, there it, it could have been. And Peter Thiel, he's a, he's a really intelligent guy. He probably knows this and probably was like, you know what? I don't know what's going on. But the safest decision right now, the game theory optimal decision in this spot is probably just to get my money out and have it be someone else's problem, you know? So that's exactly right. The stock. So I, I put zero faith in their stock issuance because they, they said they were going to issue stock. The stock's at 265. When they're actually going to get around to issue stock, the stocks would have been below 100. It, it, was, it, was, it already dropped more than half and it would have kept dropping. So they're going to have to continually issue more stock and mm -hmm. dilute more and more. What absolute moron would buy this stock right now? Uh, they, right. they could have never, they could not have shored up their liquidity with stock unless they found it, people on Wall Street bets to take all these shares. It, it's also funny, but like, uh, if you actually think about the mechanics of what they were trying to do to raise capital, and one of them was obviously the stock issuance, like you said. But it doesn't make sense for people to go in and buy those shares. So the, the price will probably be at a reasonable discount anyway, right? Um, but beyond that, beyond, beyond that issuance, the other choice was to sell the treasury bills that they bought when interest rates were a lot lower while the interest rates are a lot higher. That's the other way they could have shored up their liquidity. And that's what banks normally are forced to do to meet, um, you know, uh, depositor demand if they, if they want their capital back. But in this case, because interest rates have gone up, those bonds are worth significantly more, less. But let's even say they're a 10% or a 15%. If they liquidated their entire portfolio, let's say it's a 10% discount or whatever. Now they actually have a legit shortfall because the interest rates are, are higher, right? But another bank taking over the treasury bills won't run into that problem because they have the liquidity to wait for those bills to mature. So they don't have to sell them on the market and take the loss. They will just take the shitty interest rate. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, and I believe that's exactly what the government is going to work out. Like this weekend, the government's out there working with banks. I'm almost certain the bank is going to be J.P. Morgan. And they're going to sell off some of those loans and they're going to ask them, hey, uh, take these treasury bills and wait until they come due. And the problem is solved, essentially. Yeah, it, it, exactly. The actual a, actual aspect of trying of SVB trying to save itself will create losses unnecessarily within the banking system that could just uh, uh, as opposed to you know, either selling stock or selling treasury bills, if it's just absorbed by a, another larger depositor, as you were alluding to, um, there's not really any losses within the banking system, you know? Um, anyway. And, and the depositors, the real issue is, I think most of these guys will be made whole, if not lose a couple pennies on the dollar at most. Right. But um, the issue is how long does all this process take? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 that I cannot even begin to speculate about. Like uh, knowing the government, it, it, it could take months, but maybe uh, they could put it back in 2008. They were putting these deals together in like a half hour. So many <laughs> banks were failing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the FDIC is going to actually, even by, by early next week, it's possible the, the, the two hundred fifty thousand dollar limit accounts will be made whole really quickly. But the question is about like you know companies like Roku with its four hundred and eighty six million dollar account. Um, yeah, the bank will probably be, uh, you know FDIC will probably be able to make Roku whole, but there's some some finagling that needs to take place right before then. Um, so that, that process I think is going to take some time to play out because, you know, with government regulators, they, they're very incompetent. Deals are either rushed, as you mentioned in 2008, where they were putting together deals in 30 minutes, forcing, you know, um, banks to absorb other banks. Um, and, or, or, you know, this could take like, as in Bernie Madoff's 
Ponzi scheme unraveling like two, three years for everyone to be made whole because it's so complex. I don't know. So I, uh, I, I just, I also want to say, I don't think th- there will be any impact to the companies either. Like everyone's making it. There, the problem with uh, the media nowadays is there's so much clickbait, and it's it, it it gets a lot of clicks to say, oh, these companies won't be able to make payroll and things like that. That's actually on the companies. Maybe they won't make payroll this week, but by next week it should be sorted. Like if Roku has half a billion dollars in this bank. And the government comes out saying, hey, we have enough deposits to cover this. It'll just take six months to do it. Uh, Roku will be able to go to any other bank and take a loan against that half a billion dollars they'll have coming to them in six months. So the actual impact to everybody, it should be minimal, but there's going to be two things. Um, It's still a little chaotic to get through the administration and... Uh, there's of course clickbait social media that's just gonna speculate into the oblivion about how oh the world is about to collapse. So Sai, how do we make money off of this? What what are the trades you're watching for next week? I think Roku is an excellent name to watch. Actually, it should be at the top so of everyone's I, list. I I expect Roku to tank. Uh, they're they're one of the only companies to come out and say they have lots of money in this bank, and the gut reaction will be they should tank. And I, I don't feeling... know. I don't know when I would enter any of these positions. I would kind of wait to see if these keep going lower and bottom out. I I would want the government to come out with a game plan, and then it might be an opportunity to get in uh, on both good tech names. And the banking sector, maybe as a whole, like with a banking ETF Mm -hmm. or uh, specific uh, good banks, yeah, like um, JP Morgan or and things like that. Um, I think in like two to three months they'll all bounce back. So I'm I'm not a day trader, so I'm not looking for specific flips to do on the day. Do you see any opportunities from this? From a day trading perspective? I think, yes. So I'll probably be adjusting my watch list a little bit for the uh, for next week. Um, directly related to this situation, I'm probably going to be watching Roku. And I feel like a couple of other smaller tech names are going to be um, are, are, are going to be worth watching. I think Teladoc is probably also going to be affected by this. Um, which is another, you know, larger tech name. Well, not like... It's not a small venture cap name. It's a public name that could be affected. And uh, Twilio and Roku. And also a name like Coinbase. A, a lot of these companies, uh, Coinbase had a, a lot of price action happening on Friday. If you take a look at a stock like Coinbase, something was up. I mean, obviously, Biden was talking about taxing uh, you know, Bitcoin and all that other stuff a little bit differently and taxing electricity on... Um, on you know bitcoin but on friday the price action on coinbase was insane it dropped from like 56 down to like 52 really fast and then had a little bit of a bounce part of it was the taxation they were talking about but another part of it is obviously a lot of these crypto exchanges bank with these silicon valley banks right so that's another name i'm definitely looking at is uh you know coinbase so um i Honestly speaking, I don't think as traders or, um, uh, you know, whether you're a day trader or a swing trader, it's usually not a good idea to focus on 50 different names. Those are the tech names I'm focused on. And obviously, I'm still focused on like FRC had some disgusting price action on Friday. I traded FRC on Friday with very small size. I got a pretty okay trade in on FRC, but it dropped it from like 40 bucks And then it shot to 80 so fast, like before I even had a chance to really blink. Um, And, and, you know, eventually I took a trade on it. But FRC um, and then, you know, what what was the what was the trade? You didn't catch it at 40, did you? No, no, no. I actually shorted it at $80. Just a really, really small. Like I wasn't even going to short it in size, man. Really, really small, just the small, and it wasn't going down at first. It it took some time for the trade to play out. But when a stock drops, rises from like $40 to $80, uh, usually it drops off again. And it it looked like it wanted to run up 
again and it did it did i, I got out at a good time it ran all the way up to like 95 dollars after that um so it was the wild wild west so i personally like to your point I don't think any of these names are going to be great, like buy and hold or even swing uh, for the, you know, do, take a swing trade on. I think when you see price action from $40 to $95 in a day, these are, these become day trades, you know, FRC, um, you know, SBNY was another one where it was like a similar strange price action, not, not to the same level, of course, but it was just, it was insane how it dropped from like 60 some dollars all the way to 90 dollars and it ran that high in like an hour um so there's gonna be a lot of price action next week so i'm obviously watching frc uh wal sbny and then you can even take plays on you know bank of america jpm I, I mean, I'm guessing SVB is still trading despite the bank is closed down. I mean, um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm assuming the stock is halted. I don't know. I, I have to imagine they will be strip sailed uh, by the government. And in which case, this stock should be trading in the single digits. Yeah. I, it has to be halted because people are going to try to short this on Monday. Absolutely. And uh, I doubt they'll be able to. <laughs> I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens sometimes. And it, it, it's very funny, but sometimes when everyone starts hitting the short sell button, even though the company is bankrupt, basically, you could see a massive squeeze, a Bill Huang or a Carl Icahn style squeeze. Um, so you never know. You never know. That's why I like to day trade. I know not. So the reason uh, the reason I said it it this should be trading in single digits and not zero is because what happens typically when the FDIC steps in to save um, the depositors, they will give, like you said, they would give the loan portion to another bank. They will give uh, the depositor portion to another bank. And the publicly traded shell that's left will just carry its debt and take that into bankruptcy. And that's why it'll still exist um, and trade as probably somewhere below $5, maybe even in the pennies until it finally goes bankrupt. Um, it won't go straight to zero because it will still exist in some form with some assets as it goes through creditors and bankruptcy. Um, that's what I would expect. Like this, the, it, it, I see SVB at 106.04. I would expect the next price action to be somewhere between two and five dollars. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's gonna be a very steep drop. Si. I guess we'll see. I'm, I'm actually legit excited for what's gonna happen next week. So, um, let's let's take a look at that. Obviously, I'm still watching Tesla and all that jazz, but let's not worry about that. This upcoming week is definitely the week to be trading bank stocks and tech plays affected by these bank stocks. As far as I'm aware, Roku is the only one that's kind of really like known affected. But I, I have a feeling, uh, don't take my word for it, but a lot of other major tech companies like Teladoc and Twilio will have some sort of deposits, Coinbase. So let's, let's be real. Any, anybody that's not an absolute startup... If, if you're in Silicon Valley and you have an account at that bank, you have more than the FDIC right, amount in there. Right, right, hands down. So the, there, there's going to be billions at stake exactly. um, for different companies. They just haven't come out and said it. But that's that's the kind of swing trade I'm talking about. If Google comes out and says, yeah, we have like $10 billion sitting in there, Google stock's going to take a hit. But I don't think it'll impact anything in the long run. They'll be made whole and whatnot. So it, it might be a good opportunity to get into that stock. Exactly. Wanna... Ex exactly. And to, to be blunt, I would rather pick up the tech names that might be affected for more of a short-term to long-term trade um, than I would even some of these banks. Um, because I feel like some of these tech names, they're going to be made whole eventually. <laughs> Their business is not going to be affected. They'll they'll be able to get financing other ways. So 
Um, I'm, I'm very curious. I hope more companies start coming out. The absolute startups are the only ones that will struggle a little bit. But again, yeah. if you can prove that, hey, you have this amount of money in that account and the government will come out and say you'll be made whole in X amount of months, you're going to be able to borrow against that at another bank. No, I, I, I was just saying I, I would rather place bets in some of these tech names uh, that may get affected in the stock market in the short term um, than maybe buy some of these banks. Because I, I, I feel like the, the major tech juggernauts, if you can get them at a discount, um, they're going to be made whole. They're, they just have to figure out a way to route their financing accordingly. Those are the types of things I'm waiting to see what happens next week if, if more companies come out and start announcing things like that. that. That's what I'm looking to from a non-day trading perspective. So you, you brought up something interesting, which was um, the Biden administration and the taxes. The, the thing is, I did read that the capital gains tax uh, would double to 40% for uh, people of a certain income. What are, what are your thoughts on that? I don't, it, that that's, that's, would affect that, that's, you. It's just not going to pass. There's like, uh, I mean, he can, he can go for it all he wants. The people that are voting and keeping these politicians in power are not going to want their taxes increased. That's, that's exactly who's going to get affected. This is all just show and tell. It's a, it's a dog and pony show, whatever you want to call it. This is, I'm not even going to lose sleep on that. I, I think now I, I, I think, uh, oh, I wasn't even going to touch up on this, but um, now that some of the creative juices are flowing, but will the SBB failure, will this maybe result in Jerome Powell easing the, the interest rate um, hikes or making them slower because, you know, the, what affected Silicon Valley Bank um, might start affecting other banks if interest rates continue to rise. I, I think I briefly covered this, not directly, but in my opinion, these other banks have now seen this company fail. Now, we're assuming there's competent people leading the banks, of course, and that's that's a very big assumption. But when you see this bank fail, the other banks should be stepping back and saying, hey, uh, we need to keep more cash reserves. So I think this will actually help Jerome Powell create the recession he's supposedly not trying to create (laughs) in that um, banks will now loan out less and keep more money in reserves. And that's part of where we're going with these rate hikes anyway. So it actually kind of helps Jerome Powell in my opinion. Yeah, so you're saying he might not even uh, have to ease up on raising rates. He can just keep going at the speed he wants to go at because other banks are just going to adapt by holding this, more deposits. This, this basically was uh, this basically shows the banks that they have to keep more in reserve, mm. and they're gonna do that anyway. And uh, it, it'll actually enhance the effect of the rates faster than Jerome Powell was able to do it without this failure, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a very interesting thought. And um, I, do think, I do think he's going to uh, kick the entire economy into a recession. <laughs> but um, he says he's not going to do that, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, just, just the same way Jerome Powell said they believe that inflation was, uh, was temporary or was transient was the was a term that they used so frequently well it's clearly not transient jerome all right i paid 13 dollars today at chick-fil-a for for something that i used to spend eight dollars on you know i went to taco bell and got a meal for 13 dollars. i've never spent 13 dollars at taco bell my entire life until recently with all this inflation it's funny you say that because i was gonna get taco bell today but it was priced so high, I thought I might as well spend just a little bit more and go to Chipotle. <laughs> oh man. Oh. But anyway, Sai, that's that's basically all I wanted to discuss this this week. Silicon Valley bank failure, what to trade, how to position yourself. And um you got anything else for me, buddy? 
No, no, I, I think we covered a lot. I don't know if we covered it in a coherent, cohesive manner for your viewers. But uh, let's see what they have to say. Um, I guess we'll find out how right or wrong either of us are on Monday. Uh, everything I said could have been wrong. But we'll see. I, I, I just don't see too many ways this is going to play out other than very straightforward. All right. Well, thank you very much for your perspective on all this, Sai. I really appreciate that. And I hope um, your views have allowed our own viewers to develop their own thought process on the situation and decide what they want to do with their trading next week. All right. Th thank you guys for um, watching this. We did something a little bit different this week, uh, a little bit more of a discussion. So you get a more broad based perspective on a very narrow topic. If you guys liked it, please leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe, and we can try to do these a little bit more regularly. Thanks for tuning in. No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is really, look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 or something, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. I just want the money, 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 money.